So I haven't done a vlog in God knows how long, and I feel like doing one today. So we got some stuff to do. I have to run up to the mod garage to go grab the injectors for the STI. The proper injectors are now here. But uh, we're taking Melanie's car today because the BRZ is uh, yet again being a pain. It's being a huge pain right now and I just don't want to deal with it. For those of you that caught the live stream the other day, the tune on the BRZ just, it's not, it's not working out. Um, I was driving the car the other day, coming up the hill local to me on the freeway, car went into limp mode, zero throttle response, nothing was happening until I cleared the codes on the car. So we are getting the car e-tuned through Delicious Tuning. So in the next week or so, I should get a base map from them. I'll be working with Bill, the tuner down over there, just to get the BRZ like functional as a daily driver because I, just, I cannot deal with this anymore and it being like hit or miss with reliability for daily driving aspects. So uh, Impreza time today. So I'm gonna grab a coffee, let's go hit up the mod garage, let's go bug Brian. He also got like two new warehouses, so I'm gonna go like oodle around and like see what he's got. Maybe I'll do some window shopping. Maybe I'll grab something that I might need. Who knows? Let's go, see. I don't know. 310. All right, off to the mod garage. So after driving Melanie's Impreza for like 20 minutes now, it's so nice. It is so nice driving a stock car. You don't have anything to worry about. It's comfortable. There's no like speed bumps or like cracks in the road you have to avoid. This is so comfy. But let's go swing up to the mod garage. Oh my God. Now I mean this in the nicest way possible. Actually, no, I don't. I mean this in the meanest way possible. If you don't know how to drive, don't. I, oh, hey, it's Brian. Let's go bug Brian. So, uh, as you guys remember, Brian used to just have that one space down there. Yeah, now he's got like two more. Look, he has like the giant grand opening sign now too. It's super messy. I don't think anyone cares if it's a super messy. Oh, you painted the walls. Oh my God. It looks so much better in here. That's copyrighted. I'm not going in there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you got so many like, oh, and you got like all the fancy security cameras. Do you got so many parts? You have so many. Do you have anything new? Yeah, you got any new? New! Anything new that I might want? Got... Is everything moved out of the old warehouse? That was like down there? Oh, are these the racks you have to move? No, no. I was about to say, those are big racks. Brian, you legit have a hole in the wall. <laughs> what the? Now that we have the keys, we need- Were you allowed to do that? Yeah, they had one previously, but I guess- <laughs> I had it and it's just for like small people. But we're like, the real door was over here. Oh, I see, and there's the culprit. Yes. Nice, dude. So what's uh, what are you gonna be doing with this space entirely? Are all these racks leaving, going to that side, and you're just keeping fluids over here? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he actually said that's... he did his own Plasti Dip on this. This is Plasti Dip? Yeah, I was surprised. It came out really well. That's actually pretty good for Plasti Dip. Wow. No, that's not bad at all for Plasti Dip. Looks like a wrap. Some spots, it's a little bit. I mean, at least it's World Rally Blue underneath, so you can't really tell. <laughs> Interesting color choice, though. All right, what racks are we moving? Ooh, just don't tell OSHA. So Brian hooked it up. We did get the injectors picked up, so I'm pretty stoked about these. As you can, like, once we get back down to the house, I'll show you guys the major differences between these. But these have a much smaller sleeve on the end of them to be able to fit into our uh, lower TGV housings and the fuel rails. So these are the proper injectors. If anyone's curious on the part number, uh, was that 1300.34.14.1616 or something like that? I'll link these down below uh, if anyone is doing a similar conversion and they need these injectors as well. But super stoked we got these ones. I'm kind of I want to. I want to go see. I want to go see if they fit. I just want to go make sure that these fit in the car. So let's go swing back down to the garage. Let's get these put into our lower TGV housings, which I have yet to show you guys. And I have a lot of STI updates for you guys also, because it has been a little while since we've done any updates on it. Uh, but let's go see if these fit. Curious. I complained about this when I got up to the mod garage, but people, if you don't know how to drive, just ask. It's awful, it's awful, I don't understand. I do not understand how people just do not know how to drive if they just genuinely don't care about like, rules of the road or if they just don't care about etiquette of driving i swear i lose my mind every single time i drive on like the freeway or the highway in traffic but like common sense for like driving just out the window genuinely don't understand it but made it back down to the house uh, let me show you guys the major difference between these injectors that we just picked up in the prior set that we had ordered because you're gonna see a huge difference as soon as I show you guys this. So here are our lower TGV deletes and fuel rails. I already powder coated these also. They came out awesome. It's like this black bronze color. Uh, couldn't be happier with those, but these are the injectors. So these are the ones that we just picked up on the right. These are the ones that we had ordered before that just obviously they wouldn't fit. Like you can see the size difference between those two, why that one wouldn't fit uh, versus that one. So I wanna get these just kind of 
like plooped in here just so all of this is set up and done with. And once the injectors are in here, our fuel system is bought, ordered, somewhat installed and like ready to go. I got the fuel pressure regulator yesterday in that radium box down there. We already have the fuel pumps and all that good stuff installed in the car. And where did they go? Right there. I don't know why I'm so excited about these, but I am. We got the exhaust manifold flanges. So when it comes time to make our custom exhaust manifold, the flanges are here. So that way we can just start, or the fabricator can just weld on these to make our custom manifold. I need to get the turbo ordered. Once we have the turbo, we can get the exhaust all done on the car. Well, obviously once we get the motor in the car and everything like that, but super pumped on that. It's the small stuff that's coming in that's just like I'm getting hyped for. We have, we're we pretty much ready to go once we get the motor back to throw it in this thing. The clutch is ordered, so I'm just waiting for the clutch to come in. We have the motor mounts. We're just like, we're ready to drop her in. I also got the battery installed. That's why you see like one headlight in here. I'll show you guys the battery setup too. So our battery setup is in the car. So huge shout out to Melee Design also for sending us this battery. They did this really cool etching on the battery too with the Smedia logo. So super pumped about that. I'm gonna give you guys a whole lot more detail about this battery setup here in the near future and why I chose the location of where it is. But it's like, it's sturdy, it's in there, it's not going anywhere. But once again, huge shout out to Melee, De Melee Design for sending us their, uh, their rally spec battery tray and battery. You guys are gonna have a whole lot of info coming on that thing here soon in an upcoming video. But uh, I wanna get these injectors thrown in here just to see how they look. So let's let's just knock that out. Yo, these things look so good. I'm so glad I got like this powder coating set up. That just makes things look so good. A little bit of super lube. I need a little more super lube for the top O-ring. Now, in theory, this should just ploop right in. Oh yes, yes, yes! That's such good news, guys. I was stressing last time when I tried to like, here was the major issue with these like other ones, like the tip size on that injector is bigger than the housing for where they go. So you guys can kind of see my struggle with those ones. So super pumped that these ones just like ploop right in. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Nice and lubricated. Yes, now the fuel rail should slide right over onto these guys. There's one, two, and three. There we go. That's what we wanted right there. And then now we can bolt the fuel rail down. Perfect. We have injectors. We have injectors in our fuel rails. Yes. I am so pumped for that. Let's do the other one. Let's get it knocked out. Let's get it done with. I'm so glad, dude. I'm so glad that this is fixed and taken care of. Oh my God, you guys, I'm so excited for this. The fuel injectors fit in there so nicely. They're so, gosh, yes. I also got the fuel pressure regulator in yesterday. So this is Radium's uh, fuel pressure regulator. This allows me to run dash eight line. I also got the fuel pressure regulator gauge, obviously, just so we can set fuel pressure and everything like that. But our entire fuel system is pieced together and here at this point. Another update that I have for you guys on this turd is that the Radium dual fuel pumps that I have back here in the back seat, I did wire those in. I did not make an entire video showing you guys how to wire those in just because my application is going to be a lot different from what you guys do if you were to wire that in also. But I'm so pumped for this. As soon as we get the motor back and we get the clutch in, we can bolt the motor, we can get the motor permanently installed in the car. We can get the entire fuel system ran. It's just, it's so much, it's like so much good progress is happening right now. Uh, even though we don't have the motor back, we're getting like a lot of the smaller parts in and done with. So that way, as soon as we get the motor back in, we can start getting everything bolted up and like pieced together. The next big ticket item I'm going to order is going to be the ECU or the turbo. I haven't really decided yet. If we got the turbo, we can knock out all the fabrication stuff. But if I got the ECU in, uh, we could start doing the wiring, testing a lot of the wiring also, because that is going to be the biggest pain point for us. So I don't know. What do you guys think I should order next? The turbo or the ECU, drop it in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. But I'm so pumped for all of this because like STI's parts are starting to come in. They're starting to get done. We're starting to get more stuff back. So like I said, let me know what you guys think I should order next, the turbo or the uh, ECU. They're both gonna be around $2,500. So I mean, at least with the ECU, we could get like start getting stuff wired in. But if we get the turbo, as soon as we get the motor in the car, we can start doing a lot of the fabrication aspects of things. So I don't know, let me know what you guys think. But like all this small progress, it's all adding up. I'm, I'm, I'm just so stoked. I'm so excited to like start getting things going on this a little bit more. Uh, it feels like it's taking forever in 
in reality, Outfronts only had the engine for about a month and a half. Uh, it does take a little bit of time for those of you that have been asking for like, how's the motor going? How are things going with the builder? So I know for a fact, the closed decking process of the EG33 is done. That is 100% done. I know we sent the crank out to be nitrated about two or three weeks ago because they had an issue with their old company that did it. I guess they don't do it anymore, unfortunately. Um, something happened that drew them out of business or something like that, I'm not entirely sure. Hopefully here in the next month, month and a half or so, we get the EG33 back so that way we can start fitting a lot of the things in here and uh, getting this going a lot more. But in the meantime, like I said, we are gonna be retuning the BRZ. So for those of you that have been heavily considering an e-tune but you don't like quite know what goes into it, I'm gonna document the entire e-tuning process with delicious tuning when we retune the BRZ just to get that kind of knocked out also because I need that car to be like reliable and drivable every single day and not like cut power on me uh, give me like throttle and fuel cut and all that stuff it's just it does doesn't work for daily driving aspects but that's all I got for you guys on this one I just I wanted to get away from doing uh, like discussion videos every single day and mix it up a little bit with just some like fun activity some fun activity kicking it in the mod garage for a little bit uh, they have a lot of exciting stuff coming up too which I'm going to loop you guys in on because I'm going to be a part of it so as that kind of unfolds a little bit more I'll keep you guys informed on that but it's something you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. But if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button and turn it blue, like the hood on the Subaru. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up one of these corners. No idea which one I'm going to put it in quite yet. But with that though, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!